five. Uh, let's go over to the phones where we have Dr. Juan Flores, the superintendent of uh, Catholic schools. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Chris. How are you? We're doing pretty good. Um, I know that I got an email that said uh, to get you on because you have some uh, news about uh, the Catholic school system. So here we are. Great. Um, first of all, you don't have to worry about calling me Doc because, you know, I, I can't write prescriptions. So Yeah, I think especially with this COVID response, if I call you Doc, people are going to get the wrong idea. Yeah, <laughs> they'll have to have a special mask or something. Right. So we'll, we'll eliminate that. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I wanted to just uh, make sure the folks know that uh, the principals and the teachers in the schools obviously continue to work in the Catholic schools to, to keep the distance learning. But they're also struggling with a couple things right now. First of all, the end of the year is in sight. And so officially all schools will end on May 29th. Um, but each school has a different uh, final day to, to, to say... Um, that the high schools might have different um, uh, activities that they want to continue. The elementary schools have different things they want to do. The other thing that's really critical because it is the end of the year is um, the, each school is now developing um, policies to determine how to make sure that students get a fair grade for the fourth quarter and then how to fairly and, and um, eff effectively uh, incorporate that grade into the grade for the whole year because this is obviously um, unusual for most of the schools. So while this is always a busy year, a busy time of the year for schools, it's especially challenging now for the teachers and the principals because of what we're going through with distance learning. Right. I mean, I'm, um, I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to do exams and, and things like that because my son, he goes to a, a Catholic school and uh, I I really just don't don't know how this is all going to work out because he even before um, school was uh, shut down, he had been sick. He had been sick for a, or about a week, so he missed all of those exams. He went back and was trying to you know take them, but then the school was shut down, and so you know for me personally, I'm just really frustrated because I I don't really know what's going to happen, and I, I yeah. really hope my son doesn't flunk the fifth grade. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the things that's very clear from the principals that, that whatever policy, whatever process they, they decide, they're going to go out of the way to make sure that no kids are at a disadvantage because of what we're going through. Even to the point where some principals have said to me, if we have to continue the learning process through the summer so they get caught up because it was so challenging. I mean, imagine if there are three or four kids in the home and they, and they have one internet account and maybe one laptop, right? That means not every kid is able to do everything right away. Mm -hmm. So the, the principals and the teachers know that there are some challenges. And I, I keep encouraging the families that call me, call the principal and say, this is our situation and this is an accommodation we would need and we would really appreciate some help. And I gotta tell you that while it seems frustrating, I agree with you, it is frustrating, we ask educators who are used to doing something in a certain way, some for as many as 30 or 40 years, to literally overnight switch gears. And I, it's like asking somebody who's only used to driving an automatic car, you know, you give them a standard and you tell them, and you've got to get to the hospital right away. Um, it's, it's been really tough for many of them. Yeah. You know, I, I've watched teachers go through lessons on Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we used to make jokes about how people who are challenged with technology, they, they don't know where the any key is. Do you know where the any key is, Chris? Uh, <laughs> what? When you get to directions and it says press any key. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm here looking at my keyboard. Where's any key? <laughs> I'll just press them all. Well, I thought you guys would be with it enough to know that one. Yeah, but, um, yeah so so I got to tell you that for the for the teachers, that's what it's been like, right? Mm -hmm. But man, so many of them, um, I, I'm amazed at the number of principals who used to be challenged with trying to get my email messages, you know, could get on Google, on Zoom conferences. Mm -hmm. We've all been forced to learn <laughs> and very, very quickly. Yeah, my son learned how to do Zoom uh, last week. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, Doc, I mean, uh, Juan, what can you tell us about any adjustment in tuition? Because, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of parents are wondering why do they have to keep paying a full tuition when, uh, you know, they're not going to school? Uh, I mean, it's a pretty easy question to figure out. Yeah. So, so there are two issues there. One is, the first issue is uh, to take into consideration any families that don't have the wherewithal to pay tuition, right? And again, I, t- I send them to the principals because the principals tell me that on a daily basis, they are they are working those things out with the families, either in deferments or in discounts or figuring something out so it, it doesn't become yet another issue of anxiety for the families right now. The second thing is, um, well, I, I'm not going to compare what the teachers are doing to solid waste. You know, I, I, I paid my bill the other day, and I realized, you know, they're not collecting my recyclables, but I'm still paying the full bill. But I also understand that hopefully they're going to get caught up. I want to tell you that I, I think that the teachers are still earning that tuition, and that's the only way they can get paid. So I think that, 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 that the families that are continuing to support the schools, God bless them. Yeah. And God bless them even though they have some questions and they are some challenges. And I think if the principals could cut the tuition as much as possible, they would do it. Right now, that's really a challenge. But the second thing, and maybe more importantly, those families who are challenged in paying tuition, please go to the principals. Give them some indication of why you think you can't make payments now because the principals are taking those things into consideration. Uh, And it breaks their heart when the family should say, we're not showing up anymore, and they never, they were never given a chance to work something out with the family. Right. So, so, so one, it would be on the, the parents of the students to initiate that conversation with the school, with the individual school administrations. There's no uh, blanket policy for all the Catholic schools. Say, hey, maybe, right. maybe since, yeah. uh, you know, we're just going to chop tuition 50% or, you know, there's going to be a, a, a system-wide deferral. So it's, it's really yeah. up to the individual parents. You know, um, I have some experience working with um, another school system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one would that be? <laughs> we won't, we won't yeah. get into that. But yeah, yeah. The, the Catholic school system is very different because it's a, it's a collection pretty much of independent schools. And the individual um, principals are responsible for the financial well-being of the schools. So I don't want to dictate to them what they should do. I'm just trying to provide them with support. Sometimes I think they're annoyed at how much I'm sending to them. I've, I've tried to push them to apply for the PPP loans. Um, we're trying to get them all set up on higher Guam so that if they do furlough employees, those employees will be covered with some kind of empl- unemployment support. And then we're looking to the, supposedly the CARES Act had some support to local school systems and we're trying to see if any of that could go to the private non-public schools um so my job right now is to support them and to provide them with any advice and and get them some resources as much as possible so most of my day is spent talking to individual principals Mm. and then every so often we have long conference calls you know the uh, limit on 45 minutes free zoom conference calls those went out the window the first day because we, we can't limit our conversation to 45 minutes. So the bottom line is go to the individual principal. Right. If, you're, if you're challenged by, you know, the, the, you know, most people have pride and they might not want it, they might not know how to approach the principals without ruining their, their good rep, their relationship to the principals. Mm-hmm. Get a hold of me and I'll, I'll talk you through what I think are good talking points to share with the principals because every single one of them is uh, concerned about the kids and they don't want to lose the kids right now and they want to be understanding of the families that are struggling right now. And there are many families that are struggling. And I'm pretty sure the principals aren't, you know, I mean, they, they know what's going on out here, right? No one is insulated from this uh, COVID crisis in terms of the, the financial impact it's had on so many of us. Yeah, you know, one of the challenges right now is that, you know, most of our teachers, um, while they all have salaries during the year, those salaries are a lot lower than other teachers. And if another member of their family lost a job or is, is has reduced hours at this time, 
there's not a lot of savings to kick in mm. right now to to help them out. So they're also going through it, and and I think that they're expressing that to their principals. So that helps the principal to be understanding of what families are going through. Have you, have you got any complaints, Juan, uh, from parents who uh, you know um, uh, feel like they're paying the the full tuition uh, or they're being asked to pay the full tuition, but they've now become essentially full time teachers for their kids and uh, I'm talking about the because uh, I know some parents who uh, have basically a big part of their day is uh, dealing with all these assignments that are coming down from the Catholic schools. Uh, and I'm not saying, you know, parents shouldn't be involved. We, of course, there's a lot of time to be involved right now. But uh, what do you make of this uh, idea that, hey, I'm paying this full tuition, but I'm basically executing all these lesson plans. And I, I mean, you know, maybe some parents are still working. They don't have time for it. So how do you kind of gauge what uh, parents are doing to shore up, uh, you know, all the, the things that they would normally get with a physical school setting? And how do you like kind of leverage that against, do I still got to pay a whole tuition? Because I've, I've heard from a bunch of parents that it's a, it's a common issue that comes up. Yeah, and I and I think that's a great that's a great um, question, a great concern, Chris. I would say again to go to the principals and say, listen, we don't have the time to do this, and we're not getting enough direction from the teachers. And and I'm I'm not going to lie. I think there are some teachers who practice you know, having Zoom conferences every day with their kids to make sure they know exactly what goes on as far as lessons are concerned. Just giving out a set of assignments is not a lesson. That's not teaching. That's just telling the kids how to open a textbook, read the chapter, answer the questions at the end of the, at the chapter. That's not really teaching. But some of the teachers have found ways, even with printed material, to actually instruct the kids. And if the families feel they're not getting that, this is the same way, the same issue when kids are given homework, but the homework is not based on what went on in school that day. And parents are frustrated by that. And I would say that in the same way, they've got to communicate with the schools. Um, I would suggest that the parents try to contact the teachers and say, you know, I can't do this. What can what can you do or, or how can you help me so that my kids are not going to lose out? Because the message we gave out, the message we agreed on, I don't think I gave it out, but, I, but it was agreed by the principals. We're going to try to give the kids to the extent possible, a fourth quarter of as much learning as possible so that when the kids end this school year, they're ready to move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. They're ready to move on to the next grade, the next level, to graduate from high school. If they're given credits, they need to earn those credits. So if somehow a teacher is not helping the kids learn, I think the, the parents need to have a conversation directly with the teacher or the principals. And I know that a lot of what goes on right now is um, all the parents now have chat groups. And I think if the parents find a common concern about a teacher, go to the principal or go directly to the teacher and say, how do we fix this? Most teachers are not sitting at home twiddling their thumbs or catching up on, on uh, Golden Girls episodes. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that. They're doing their work. But they, but they need to know that they should be instructing the kids and then they need to know that they should be giving the kids feedback on all the work that they're doing so the kids have a fighting chance to learn from what's going on. Hey, I had a question here from a, a, a listener. Uh, Carlo writes in, which schools have applied for the Paycheck Protection Program? And if that uh, loan from the SBA is approved, will then discounts be considered for tuition? Good question, Carlo. That is a good question. Almost all the schools have. Um, you know, there are only seven archdiocesan schools, which means there are schools directly connected to the archdiocese. The other are sponsored schools that are run by, like, the School Sisters of Notre Dame or... Like Mount Carmel or... Right. Yeah, and, yeah, Mount Carmel's in a special category. But right. um, but every single, most of those schools also got denied, right, because they ran out of money in the first day or so. Wow. So we're hoping that this new infusion of money into the PPP loans will help the schools. I think that um, if, in fact, there, there, there is money that can be released to the families, I think the schools will do it. But families should know, too, that not all the schools are getting all of the tuition. 
So, in fact, there are already discounts going out because not all the families are paying 100%. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and the schools are dealing with that on an individual basis right now. So which schools were approved, uh, the PPP? I'm not aware that any of our schools were approved. But they applied. Right. But they all applied. Okay. And we encourage them to apply because, and it, it, it may work now, the banks, when they were denied, all the banks wrote a paragraph, or at least a sentence that said, we're keeping your application. If more funding becomes available, you know, it's got to go on the, on, the, on the list of those who will be considered. So, you know, this is probably where divine intervention is going to play a big role. Light a candle. Mm-hmm. Light, Light a candle, candle, say a rosary, make a special plea to the Lord. Pray for your tuition. <laughs> well, I don't know. If Who's the patron saint of discounted tuition? I don't know. Uh, our Lady of PPP. <laughs> I don't mean that lightly. You know, the Blessed Mother intervenes for us all the time, so she's probably uh, working uh, overtime right now because of us. Maybe you're not praying enough, Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Juan, anything else you want to add in here? That's it. The, the last thing is that the high schools um, are struggling to figure out what's going to happen with graduation. Right. Um, Where are we on that? Well, it's a wait and see. It depends on what happens when, um, you know, the governor lets up. And they're not in a hurry to, to do anything that's going to jeopardize our health. Right. Uh, there have been conversations about, uh, you know, drive-by graduations or <laughs> having people out in the field six feet apart or whatever. Um, and I, you know, I'm I'm in the in that special group of people in 1976 who also had our graduations messed up, but we eventually got to come together and get our diplomas. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen this year. So the principals are waiting to see what's going to happen. They're having conversations all the time and coming up with scenarios because they want the kids to make sure that their efforts, you know, upon graduation will be recognized and they get to celebrate with their families. All right, one. Uh, I just had a, um, a question, and, and this is just um, because of how uh, financially uh, things have been going with the the private schools. Has there been any hint or discussions about um, any private schools potentially not uh, opening next year or closing down? Um, I think that's a valid question. Um, I have conversations with principals, especially those that have um, very tight budgets right now. Um, you know. The, those schools are run on a shoestring. There's very few luxuries. There has not been a conversation yet about any school not opening in the fall, if we open in the fall. So, um, and and if if our mission is to continue the work of the archdiocese in bringing kids to God through through the Catholic schools, I hope none of them will close, because they all have special populations and they all have special missions and. And they're all worthwhile for the archdiocese. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, we could we could pray all we can, but the bottom line is the economy is probably going to dictate anything, everything more than anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go, Juan. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Keep in Talk touch. You, later. you got okay. my number. Anytime you need anything announced, uh, you know, when you guys are going to roll out that big pay your tuition now and get 50% off uh, program. Let me know. <laughs> Where'd you hear that? He's just messing with you. Messing with you. You've been saying more rosies than I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Juan. God bless you guys. Wash Hi. your hands. Mm, All right. The lady of PPP. <laughs> that was oh funny. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Zinger. Hey, at nine uh, forty-two. It's uh, the KUM News takeover of containing COVID. Uh, I'm going to take a 